right. Hi, everyone. I'm Jacob from Galici. And we want to democratize virtual reality training. So every year, over 600 billion uh, US dollars is wasted in the manufacturing industry. Millions of people are injured. And the problem is due to lack of competence in the manufacturing industry. Now, virtual reality has been proven to be a fantastic tool to train and practice uh, manual tasks and things where you need to interact. 15 times as efficient as, for example, reading or watching a video. But the problem with virtual reality is that even though the hardware has gotten accessible and affordable the latest few years, the software is not. You still need to do big customized implementation, which is costly and not scalable. At Glitchy, we have solved this problem with our interaction engine, Virtual Grasp. With Virtual Grasp, we make it easy to create a virtual reality training experience. We implement our software in an existing 3D scene, and you can immediately start interacting and learning by doing. We have very simple interfaces to input whatever information needs to be provided to the user. Now, the magic behind this is that we standardize some of the core components of creating a virtual reality experience. In its uh, base, we have automated how you can interact with your hands. Uh, it's a technology coming from eight years of robotics research, has been awarded by IEEE among others. And it's a technology that cre can create realistic hand interaction in real time. So this is a scalable way of making it possible to actually go in there and, and use your hands and, and learn by doing. We standardized the interfaces in terms of how you get instructions and feedback. And we included people with different disabilities, such as neuropsychiatric disorders, and t as well as autism, used to, uh, and, and dyslexia as well, for that matter, uh, to have this kind of design for all approach. Uh, the technology is independent of whatever hardware you're using, whatever use case uh, you apply it to. But we started focusing on the manufacturing industry because we see a clear urgency in this market. We started collaborating with some world-leading industry companies, and the main use case at the moment has been to help their staff be able to practice emergency situations to avoid injuries. We started seeing some exciting stuff happening in the latest uh, half year, though. We've seen that this technology can also enable people looking for jobs that have a difficult time to, for example, in interviews, to be able to test a job, actually start practicing it in VR by doing it, and proving to the employer that you're able to perform the job. So this is really exciting uh, stuff. Our team of uh, nine people based in Stockholm, combining world-leading researchers as well as awarded entrepreneurs. Uh, we right now uh, are, uh, we have around 1,000 uh, people using the technology, and we estimate that we will have about 10,000 upcoming year. And with the help of MIT Solve, we believe we can help uh, the lives of millions of people around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a question from Jay. Can you talk a little bit about the competitive edge of your technology? Who else has it? Is mm. it limited primarily to hand movements as opposed to physical movement of the entire body in a plant? And mm. do you actually work in, in an assisted robotic environment? Mm. So our focus has very much been on the interactive aspects, where we've seen from research that being able to use your hands freely is a competitive edge that makes a significant difference when you want to remember something. And our core is coming from that area. And what we are trying to do here, because there's a lot of solutions or a lot of companies trying to develop virtual reality solutions for training purpose. We're not trying to make solutions for every individual company. We're trying to develop one of the tools that will make it much easier to make this accessible all over the world. So we're focusing very much on the interaction aspect. And we are right now the absolutely best in the world on that aspect of enabling the interaction and enabling people to learn in a pedagogical way. So that's the, the main aspect. And I think you might have had another question as well. Yeah, fair enough. Oliver. <laughs> And uh, actually, along those same lines, though, there's technology now where people are interacting through uh, augmented reality goggles directly mm -hmm. with their work every day. Right. So the training and the doing is actually happening simultaneously. Are you planning to do that as well? Mm -hmm. uh, or are you just on the training side? And as a quick collat uh, collateral question to that, are you tr designing trainings for all the possible machines and lines out there? How are you picking what you actually train on? Right. So first and foremost, we developed the interaction engine to make it possible for other people to s quickly create these training exercises for machines. So we have these interfaces where you can put in whatever information the user should see, so it make it a very simplified way of doing it. So we don't want to create the courses ourselves. That's not scalable. 
In terms of AR, yes, we can provide solutions for AR. I much more believe in VR at the moment because the AR technology is way too clumsy for, to be used in the manufacturing setting at the moment, uh, at least the clients we've been talking to. Also, I believe AR is a fantastic tool for instructions and getting help in, in real time what to do things, whereas VR is a fantastic tool to empower people. And I think that's the importance of technology, that we can empower people to learn and become better things, not just be people that follow instructions from glasses. So I think that's kind of the core that we want to emphasize on. But yes, uh, AR, we could apply it in as well. Uh, a quick question. Uh, can your technology or solution be used for skills assessment? I'm kind of thinking a lot of refugees coming in uh, and they, are, you know, they need to be tested on the skills because uh, their degrees are not being uh, recognized. Fantastic question, because we're actually looking at that with one of our clients right now, where they have a large uh, group of consultants coming in from, uh, that doesn't speak Swedish, where the company is based in. And with this technology, we can actually instruct them using visual cues instead of language. So we can actually help people learn in that kind of environment. But even more important for them, they can be certified and show that they're actually able to do it, not by going through a theoretical test, but actually by showing it and that they follow the, the security measurements. Thank you.